the moment you wake up, right? I mean, I crawl out of my bed into my chair, right? Everything's a challenge. Like every single little thing's a challenge that people would take for granted. But like the way I view it, right, is I seriously like that. Like I like that I have it harder than other people. Like I, I want to win. And so it's like, you know, I'm going to win no matter what life throws I mean, the wheelchair, the shin, whatever. And I actually kind of like the fact that, you know, I have it harder than this guy, but I'm still going to win. I know I got it harder than him, but I'm still going to win no matter what. And so I, I don't know, I, I kind of get fired up by it. And, and honestly, I feel kind of blessed in a sense too, because your suffering can be used as a way to help other people with their suffering. Right. I mean, I'm very empathetic because you know, like, I don't know, for example, someone that's in poverty, right? I feel that while having a muscle wasting disease, being in a wheelchair is different than being in poverty. I'm still able to relate to them in some sense because we still have our adversity, right? Someone that has, you know. Hello? Hey, Elijah, how's it going, my man? Doing good, how are you? Doing fantastic. So, um, like I saw, like I said earlier, I guess I found you on TikTok, and um, you know, I've seen like some of your story. Like, what have, like, what do you, what have you been? What's like your current set of goals right now? Like, what, what's like your backstory? What's like the origin story of you, Elijah? Uh, I know it's a big question. <laughs> yeah, the origin story is. Uh, hmm. Well, I don't know if you're talking in terms of like you know my childhood, like where that started, or kind of like when I started on like my entrepreneur. Kind I of, think both. I would like to hear like some of your childhood first and then like the seed that gave birth to the entrepreneurial story and the entrepreneurial story like to now. Yeah. The so childhood, you know, basically I grew up on the football field. My dad was a head football coach, um, started a new program, which I actually think now that I reflect on it, I feel like that's where I kind of got some of my entrepreneur tendencies from is watching my dad, you know, I mean, running a team, right? Um, mm -hmm. Kind of like running a business in a sense. And that competitive spirit was definitely um, developed there and, you know, always trying to improve, just stay ambitious, right? That that's probably where that comes from is growing up on the football field. So I spent a lot of my childhood on the football field, like basically every single day, I really competitive, always wanted to win, um, really love sports um, because of that. And that's a little bit there, but while that was also happening, you know, um, I was starting to walk slower and fall on the floor more frequently than the other kids. And something was obviously wrong. So, you know, started going to the doctors, people noticed. Um, and I eventually was diagnosed with uh, shin muscular dystrophy, which is a muscle wasting disease. So that was happening at the same time. But because that was happening, I was missing a lot of school, especially in the mornings. Mm -hmm. And that's when language arts took place. So I was really behind in school. Like I struggled reading. Like I was the, I was the dumb kid in class who got made fun of um, and who couldn't read and like, Oh, it's a lot of turn to read and everyone went, Oh, this is going to take forever now. You know, I was that kid. And um, you know, so I kind of had a very, I had a hard childhood for sure. I mean, it wasn't like the worst thing ever, but I definitely had my adversity early on. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. So, I mean, I, I wasn't that good of a student either, but you know, it was definitely a different case, but I know it's like to be the kid like, oh man, you can't read that fast. Blah, 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 blah. So I, I feel you on that one, brother. So what gave birth to like your entrepreneur journey? What, what where did that story start? Yeah. So, uh, so actually in sixth grade, kind of continued on sixth grade, I had a friend who was really competitive and I'm really competitive and he always like, oh, I'm smarter than you because I have straight A's. And he kind of became like kind of a toxic <laughs> friend in a sense. And I didn't really believe that. I was just like, no, I don't try as hard as you. Like, uh, you're not like, that's not, I don't, I don't dig that. So I got really competitive. I got straight A's that year because of that. And, you know, seventh grade got straight A's, eighth grade got straight A's. I was just starting to dominate and like fall in love with just winning. Right. Mm -hmm. And in ninth grade, um, I joined what is called the IB program. I don't know if you've heard of that or not, but basically the IB program, it's like a little bit higher than the AP program. Um, and so oh nice it's a really rigorous um academic thing they, ha they have in high school and anyway so i joined that and you know i'm getting straight a still but while that's happening i'm starting to get really interested in entrepreneurship you know i'm starting to read a lot of books about entrepreneurship and now i'm becoming like a guy who reads all the time um i'm starting to watch videos and i fell in love with people like jeff bezos mm -hmm. um you know gary v steve jobs right and so they kind of got my interest into business. And so that's kind of where my interest in, in entrepreneurship started. 
But I, what happened is during that year, um, during that second semester of high school, I realized like, I want to do something great for the world now. Like whenever, when I was young, I always knew I want to do something great, like something monumental, but I never knew what, but then like, I still don't know what, but I knew that, okay, why well, wait till like I'm 20 or 30? Like I want to do something now. I just didn't know what it was. And um, we went to a fundraiser during that time. And during the fundraiser, it was a fundraiser for, uh, for Duchenne Muscular Dystrophy. And mm-hmm. so they have these booklets and it's put together by a high school dance studio. Anyways, we're going to the fundraiser and I'm reading through the booklet. It's pretty boring. And then I get to the end of it. And the end of the booklet, it's talking about the disease. You know, it's like, oh, it's a muscle wasting disease. Um, patients struggle walking. They lose their ability to walk when they're 11. They become depend on a wheelchair. Okay, no big news there. I'm like, whatever, right? Um, and then it gets to, and then it says, well, patients in their uh, teenage years, they start to lose mobility in their arms. And that kind of really took me back because, you know, I always threw the football around with my dad. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually played basketball at recess competitively against my friends who could walk. Um, And so I love basketball too, football and basketball are two favorite sports. Um, And and so I really was thinking back with that. I was like, wow, that really sucks. Like I kind of broke my heart right then and there. I was like, not be able to use my arms. Like, no, that's not me. That's not me. That's not going to happen. And, you know, I couldn't imagine what it would be like to not be able to throw a football around. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, it got worse though. I kept reading and and then I started to say like, yeah, you know, most patients um, pass away when they're 25. And so that's the first time I thought about death and I was like, whoa, okay. So you're telling me like, I'm like, I'm 15 at this point, right? I was 15 at that point. I was like, okay, so I could die really soon. Like that's mm-hmm. insane. And you know, that's the first time I really thought about death and thought, no, this must be a mistake. And I kept reading and it logically made me come to reality. It said that, you know, the heart and the diaphragm, they're muscles too. Well, okay. That makes sense. If your heart is a muscle and this is a muscle wasting disease where it attacks all the muscles, that makes sense. And so I was kind of like, that really sucks. Um, and the other thing too, I didn't understand the term as I do today, but it said in the book, it said that uh, Duchenne is incurable. And so I took that as they're saying, this cannot be cured. So I said, okay, I'm going to get in the game now. Let's see about that. Let's see about that. Because whenever someone tells me, hey, you can't do it, like like my friend in sixth grade, you can't get straight A's. You're not as smart as me. Okay, let's let's see. Let's yeah. see. And then I go and get the straight A's, you know? Um, so I took it as they said you can cure what it really means is there's no cure for it right now but um i took it as all they're saying you can't cure it so later that night i went home watched my favorite superhero iron man and i'm watching tony stark and i started to get inspired because he uses his knowledge to solve his problems and so i thought okay you know what i could do the same thing and i love business so then um like two weeks later i decided okay i'm starting a non-profit organization and like whatever like i don't even know i'm just going in like we're doing it and uh so that's how I found my path of, to what I want to do. And then more stuff has come out of that since then, but that's kind of the origin stories of me in short. That, that's, that's, a, that's quite a story right there, man. And so how, how far along are you in your nonprofit right now? Uh, well, I started it July 25th, 2017. Um, but like, you know, it's, it's like two, three years. And the reason I say that is because we got tax exemption in 2018, mm-hmm. like April, 2018. So I mean, you, you can't really raise any money or do really anything until you have that tax exemption. You can just create awareness or whatever. And so that's what I did. But I mean, I officially started on this journey, July 25th, 2017. But, you know, becoming a full tax exempt, you know, um, legitimate nonprofit, that was that was in 2018. Wow, that's awesome. Well, congratulations. Let's keep it going. Uh, one of the things that really, like, drew me to you, because when I saw your content, I was like, oh, shoot. Like, I know a lot of people that are, you know, scared to put themselves out there and um, like the people just have the, 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 the one thing that I realized like more and more this year is that the mindset that you have is more important than like anything else in life. I mean, you're the, the prime example of that, you know? So I saw you like you were in your chair and I was like, oh, she's putting out content he's in his chair, but he's talking good shit, you know, like he's talking about uplifting stuff, you know, trying to do things, making action, taking action. It's like, all right, like, this is my kind of guy right here. Like he's doing his thing. And, um, you know, hearing your story more now, I'm like, oh, shoot, like that's, that's crazy. So what is, what is your, uh, the goal of your nonprofit right now? Like, I didn't get too much. I didn't get to really like digest all of your content. I just like saw the person. I was like, yeah, Elijah, like that's, that's my kind of guy right there. Yeah. Well, one, I, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. That's what I'm trying to do is um, share that message, my philosophy and mindset. Right. Cause I think that we'll, we'll talk about that, but I think there's a lot I can do since I do have, you know, suffering the wheelchair, it's visible. I think that 
have a very powerful message to help other people overcome their suffering. But uh, the the golden on profit is is simple. It's to complete the cure for Duchenne muscular dystrophy uh, by advancing gene editing and gene therapy approaches uh, into human practice. So basically, we want to get gene editing stuff like I don't know if you heard of CRISPR, CRISPR Cas9. Um, not too familiar, but I'm, I'm listening. So you just enlighten me. Give give me and the listeners all the gems right now. Yeah. So gene editing is basically um, where you, you 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 take your DNA and then you can literally edit the DNA code. Oh shit. <laughs> and um, and that and that offers amazing um, possibilities to cure diseases because a lot of you know if it's a genetic, genetic disease like the shin, right? So you have a spelling error basically within your DNA code. We need to be able to correct that code, and if you correct that code then you no longer have um, that disease. Like it holds the progression of it at, at least. And so, wow. so the, you know, this is not just like the work that I'm trying to do is not going to just help people um, with the shin, but people with all other types of genetic diseases, you know, cystic fibrosis, um, blindness is even being talked about. Um, they're even trying to use CRISPR for um, cancer, um, which is pretty interesting. Wow. And so that's gene editing. But the other thing too that we want to advance is gene therapy. And basically what gene therapy is, is um, it, it basically you're inserting the whole gene, right? So if your genetic code is messed up, okay. um, let's say that you have a page and you have some spelling error, errors on the page. Uh, instead of trying to fix that specific error, gene editing, uh, let's just insert a whole new page that's all perfect and correct. That'd be gene therapy. Both approaches work. Both approaches work. Some may work better for others, um, depending on on uh, getting real technical into it, what they're be what their mutation is, but um, both of those things will lead to a cure. And that's, that's what we want to do. Complete the cure. So basically we're trying to advance science forward for the medical field. Wow. Shit. This is, that's big stuff, man. And that, that page, that page versus uh, like sentence metaphor just completely explained it so well. So I know, you, I know you do this a lot. Cause I was like, wow, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Holy smokes. Now, about like your, your, your mentality and mindset, like how do you feel every day? Cause I'm sure there's days when you feel, you know, your body feels less, not oh, as fun yeah. as it does before. And like, how do you, mm -hmm. what do you tell yourself? What how do you think? What do you talk to yourself like usually? Yeah. Um, you know, like the thing about the shin is that the moment you wake up, right. I mean, I crawl out of my bed into my chair, right. Everything's a challenge. Like every single little thing's a challenge that people would take for granted. But like the way I view it, right, is I seriously like that. Like I like that I have it harder than other people. Like I, I want to win. And so it's like, you know, I'm going to win no matter what life throws at me, the wheelchair, the shin, whatever. And I actually kind of like the fact that, you know, I have it harder than this guy, but I'm still going to win. I know I got it harder than him, but I'm still going to win no matter what. And so I, I don't know. I, I kind of get fired up by it. And, and honestly, I feel kind of blessed in a sense too because your suffering can be used as a way to – help other people with their suffering, right? I mean, I'm very empathetic because, you know, like, I don't know, for example, someone that's in poverty, right? I feel that while having a muscle wasting disease, being in a wheelchair is different than being in poverty, I'm still able to relate to them in some sense because we still have our adversity, right? Someone that has, you know, depression, anxiety, I can relate to them, help them out. Someone that um, might have parents that are, you know, getting divorced or, they're in a bad relationship or whatever, I feel like I can relate to them more because of my suffering. So um, I'm real passionate about that. I, I would actually say that my whole like life cause, my whole life goal is to minimize human suffering, right? And so um, the way I go about doing that comes in different outlets. Like destroy the shin is one way, curing diseases, right? That's That minimizes suffering one way. But you know, motivating someone or, or firing someone up or helping them overcome their suffering, that's another method. Right. There's there's so many different ways to minimize human suffering, but it's at the end of the day, it's under the umbrella of minimizing human suffering. That's a great umbrella to have under because you definitely destroying the shim. That's it, right? The shim. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shim. Can, I, can I see the, the thing behind you, the, the artwork? That's that's dope. Yeah. That's, that's awesome, man. Like that's that's cool. Um, but just just to follow what you were saying, yeah, like um adversity definitely is one of the biggest things I think that most people everyone everyone's gonna have their adversity. And it's, it's definitely how you take it. It's how you react to it, man. And I think um, what you're doing is great stuff, man. Like, this is really, really a big thing, you know, taking on one of the biggest things, I think, because I've read a lot of books as well of um, entrepreneurs and a bunch of uh, people that have made changes in the world. You know, they talk about making your, your mess your message, you know, and kind of like fixing your own problems first. And 
that's definitely what you're doing right here, man. Like destroying the shim. And like, I can't imagine how you feel just like, you know, each step from the way you were in 2017, correct? Mm -hmm. To where you are now, like how much you've changed and how much you've grown. And even if you haven't like, even as like the, your body changes, your mind probably just like getting sharper and sharper, you know, as you fight more through, through each step of everything. Now, have you, um, have you had anything like as far as 2020 has been, how has that been running a nonprofit or being in a nonprofit during this time? How has that like, affected everything? Well, yeah, I mean, it's definitely, you know, you, you have your setbacks, um, which I don't really consider a setback, I consider it adaptation. Um, but, you know, you can't do in-person fundraisers, you can't do the things that we normally do. Um, but it's okay, like, you know, let's focus more on the marketing now, let's go hard on the, on the branding, let's, let's put out a lot of content, let's put out stuff to bring more awareness to what we're trying to do, right? So we just switched to that. And we found other creative ways and, and things that I would have never been doing um, if it hadn't been for this pandemic. So if you get creative with your adversity, you can actually lead to maybe a breakthrough, right? Something I've started lately is a, um, it's called the Destroy to Shin podcast, where I basically interview every single person that's affected by the disease. And now that term affected is kind of uh, broad in the sense that it could be a parent that has a child with it. It could be a person with the disease. It could be a sibling. It could be a doctor of a patient, a teacher of a student, whoever, um, and get their perspective and see what they say. And everybody, everybody's going to have a different perspective. And it's just so interesting to hear it and to give voice to the community. I'm literally trying to empower the community. And by them talking about their suffering, and I truly mean this, by them talking about their suffering, they're truly changing the world. Right. Because when they go and they become vulnerable and they say, look, look, this sucks. You know, my arms don't work. Can't walk. People judge me for being in a wheelchair. They look at me different, whatever. Um, people then can go, OK, you know what? We need to fix this. We care about this. And the, that important thing, too, that this podcast does is it um, lets us get to know the people. Right. They're not just a statistic. It's something. OK, this person has a disease. It's like this guy likes sports. This guy hates sports. This guy likes to go to the mountains. This guy likes jazz music. I don't know, whatever. Everyone's unique. And I think that's really great because it, it builds personality behind the disease. I think so. I think that's very important. I think a lot of times, a lot of the diseases or things that um, people, a lot of things that people kind of hear people going through a lot of nonprofit stuff is just like, Oh, it's this, this is bad. Like, I'm sorry that happened. But there isn't like a, a face to it. There isn't a personality to it. There isn't a flavor to it. You know, the difference mm -hmm. between seeing like hearing Disney and seeing Mickey Mouse, you know, that that having that character to it definitely adds a lot more to the, to the story. I think it's a really great thing that you're doing. I think adding that extra little bit of like, I wasn't, I wasn't even aware of Jasem until I said, I said it right. Just to Deshin? one more time. Deshin? Deshin, Deshin. Yeah, 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 you got Deshin. it. Deshin. Deshin. DMD, DMD. You can say DMD. DMD works a lot better. Yeah, Thank you. the shin muscular dystrophy, so DMD. Yeah, that works. DMD, because I didn't, I didn't know about DMD until right now. So, like, you mm -hmm. literally just put me on, and all my listeners will now be able to expose and kind of hear more about it. That's what you with your story. So, I think this is, this is like, this is awesome. So, in between, you know, running a nonprofit, is there anything that you do, like, for yourself to kind of keep yourself? Is there, like, another, do you have any other passions that you do as well? <laughs> yeah, how long you got? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um I mean, yeah, man, I love, uh, there's so much stuff I'm passionate about. It's kind of weird because some people, and I don't mean this in any, I, I don't, I don't know. Like some people, you know, how do you find your passion? It's like, I have too many passions. Um, I'm real passionate about learning stuff, becoming better. Right. Um, like business, love it. Uh, investing, love it. Um, politics, love it. Um, philosophy love it very passionate about those things like the the real serious stuff right i'm a real serious guy the real serious stuff that can create impact and change people's lives i'm really into that so i'm passionate about all that stuff so i mean a little bit about me i guess on the fun side you know like i said i love basketball i love football so i love sports going to all that's really cool i can get out with friends um you know i i run a i run a um a bible study um which i think is really cool um, and the reason why I think it's really cool is because we're doing something a little bit different than what has been traditionally done, which is, um, we want to hear everyone's perspective, right? So mm -hmm. like, um, if you don't believe in God, like we want you to come with us and let's talk, let's debate about it. Let's, let's exchange each other's 
point of views and let the truth win out, right? Like let's like let's be respectful and like let's 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 get closer to the truth. If you're right, then I want to be on your side. If I'm right, then be on my side. Like, you know, I think having that for that open mind, that that free thinking, I think that's a really powerful thing. And I think that um I think that's what's really cool. And so it's a it's a nice little community and it brings people together. And I think that um that's really cool. And um, you know, I run a podcast with my friend um uh, where we just talk about basically and I just said um and, and that's always fun too. You know, I, I love having deep conversations that I can learn from and and that will create impact. That's awesome, man. I think um having like a free thinking Bobby studies, that's that's fantastic, man. I think yeah. um especially during this time, free thinking anything will be very important because people are very, yeah. you know, people are so polarized right now. Yeah. It being election year, it's a lot of us versus I think, them. I think, you know, uh, it's important to hear the other side because it's either going to strengthen your position or change your position, but either way, you're going to get closer to truth. And I think that's, I think that for me, at least that's what I pursue. I pursue truth at any cost. I think that's the most important thing. I believe that to be true as well. Truth, truth always wins. Truth wins throughout time. Truth always wins mm-hmm. overall. Mm-hmm. So I think that's, that is very true. And, you know, one of the other, like most of the biggest just keep you keeping that same philosophy, you know, big impact thing. We look about most of the people that mo- brought the most change, like during their time period, they were always crazy during their time where they were, you know, they just, they were the weirdos or the, 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 the have nots, you know, like a Socrates or Aristotle. Mm-hmm. Just anyone who fits inside that, that mold was just like, what, what, what were you doing? And, you know, as you see now with history, like, Oh, they've lasted, forever you know they're still here you know um the music of like a uh, beethoven or something you know so i think that um there's so many things with truth that people just aren't ready for at the moment that you like that like you may not even like the truth that you end up finding may not even be found in your lifetime but then history always shows like the end what's the most important thing and what stays tried and true um, so do you have any other books that you really like recommend you rec- that, that, that you'd recommend, um, two different books. So a uh, books that you like to rec- that you like for yourself to read and then books you'd recommend for people like trying to find out more about how to help, help with your cause and like help, like with what you're trying to accomplish. Well, about that, uh, <laughs> I actually wrote a book, um, oh, which shit. is going to be published next year, um, which I think, I mean, cause it really isn't a book that would encompass everything I'm trying to do in terms of the science, my story, everything. So I wrote an autobiography that's going to come out next year. So I would recommend that, but since it's not out now, I can't recommend that. So you said we'll be back on to promote that one too. So, yeah. Uh, Okay. Yeah, definitely. Definitely love to do it again. Um, So two books, right? One I'd like to read and one I would give to someone else about the cause in particular, or just, mm-hmm. uh, well, one, I guess one could be just one of your favorite ones too. Cause there's like, there's some personal things I would like to know too about you. Cause I just like your mentality. But then like yeah. stuff in case someone wanted to know about the cause as well. Yeah, man, I got, I got so many books. Uh, I, reading is honestly, reading is so underrated. I think it's, it's one of the greatest ways to get information. I would probably, what I always recommend, which is always at the top of my list, which is probably at the top of a lot of people's list. Um, that I think is a really powerful book for people that are wanting to be better communicators, better public speakers, better entrepreneurs, uh, have more friends, um, just improve your quality of your life, is uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. I think that book's amazing. Um, I'd recommend it to like every one of my friends. Yeah, classic. Um, A book that explains the science of like gene editing is A Crack in Creation by Jennifer uh, Downa. A crack in creation. Um, mm-hmm, a crack in creation. She, um, she's actually the one who uh, they attribute to discovering CRISPR, right? And so she wrote a book. She wrote it actually in 2017, one week after I started my nonprofit, which I thought was really interesting. But um, she, she, that book is great. I like that book, but it's definitely very scientific. Um, hmm. Yeah, there's just so many books. There is. I, it was kind of a tough question. Again, I think the two books you gave already were fine already, but I just wanted to see, like, a lot of time, I just want to make sure that people have something, as long as, like, I'll, I'll link up your stuff in the podcast that links, but sometimes people want a little bit more to kind of get a get a feel for it. Like, yeah. There's just so much. Once you once you get in, once you, like, get your mind open to a whole other side of the world, you just want to, like, kind of go in and get some more, you know? You, yeah. I know you're the kind of guy that, like, wants to, like, get in just – Mm-hmm. Once you get in, get a grasp and just understand more. I, I would also say too, in terms of books, like if you want to get into philosophy, there's some great philosophy books. 
Um, I, you know, I really like um, Stoic philosophy, right? I think that's amazing, um, practiced by the ancient Greeks. Um, so oh, there's a book, I think it's like How to Be a Stoic in Modern Times. It's a great book, great intro to Stoicism. Um, I'd also recommend autobiographies, I think, uh, or not autobiographies, but biographies in general. Um, those are great, right? Like the Steve Jobs biography, great. Um, the Warren Buffett biography, great. Um, uh, those, I mean, it, it's really, if you admire those people or you want to learn from those people and there's a lot to learn from, like a biography is a great way to really get inside their way of thinking and really see how their life was and, and try to pull stuff from that. So I think that biographies are, are definitely um, great. And I would recommend those two. Yeah, there's definitely some good reads. I got to read them. I read, uh, I read Sam Walton's biography, the guy who started Walmart. That was a good one. Arnold Schwarzenegger. But yeah, autobiography is great because you definitely see how people's uh, thought process and like how the times were for them at that moment. Because uh, just go back to that same mental thing we were talking about before, you know, I feel like there's a lot of things that, that even certain things are there and possible at the moment in time. If mentally you're not like in the realm to see it, even if it's right in front of you, you're not going to realize it, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think um, like just having, reading about autobiography kind of put you in their shoes to see like, oh, even though the whole world was looking here, they were all, they were going this way and this way ended up being the right way to end up getting to where they wanted to be. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, you know what? I, I just, I'll actually, I'm just curious, right? Um, Cause I want to, I want to help more people and, and double down on what works. Right. So what, what, I mean, you kind of, we talked about a little bit earlier, but like, what was it that really, stood out to you that you're like, wow, like that maybe helped you or that you think that, okay, this could, you know, like what, what made you like, okay, I want to talk to this guy. You know what I mean? Oh, well, I just, well, when I first saw you, I think you were, you were just talking about something. I just saw like, you were the first person I saw on TikTok in a wheelchair. I was like, all right, someone's in a wheelchair on TikTok. This is new. And you were just talking about like, you know, some, I don't remember exactly what the post was. I remember I favorited it. I got to look up what it was, but it was something, it was something positive or something about business. It's some, it was just your thoughts. And I was like, a lot of people don't even have the balls to do this, like in general, you know, like to post something online, let alone the post online and be in a wheelchair. Cause like, you know, people just like get in their heads. So I was like, all right, yeah. cool. Well, obviously he has a confidence, you know, like it doesn't fucking matter. You do whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. so then I saw you a couple of times talking about like, uh, it, it was always just some kind of positive stuff or something that was like a mindset thing. And I was like, that was like two of my, that's like two of it. That, that just gets me no matter what. So I just saw it and I was like, all right, like, I was like, keep keep track of this kid because he's like he's he's doing some things. Like, how old are you, by the way? I'm 19 now. Shit, you're 19. Yeah, that's crazy. I'm 27. Oh, how old do you think I was? <laughs> I thought you were like maybe like 23 at least. Like, that's crazy. Uh, that's funny. But um, yeah, man. I mean, like between like just like you like as a person and then your message, I was like, all right, like there's nothing. Anything that comes out of your mouth is going to be good because you being you know, in the scenario that you are, it's just like, you know, that's having adversity that is visibly seen. Yeah. Is enough to be like, oh, like you could be like, yo, fuck this, life sucks. Mm -hmm. But then to be to be able to to be able to to understand that and harness that mindset to be like, no, like I'm not gonna let this consume me. And then be able to harness it and then put it out in the form of content. I was like, oh like this this kid to steal. Like and you know, you're one of those people that I can already feel like I can already tell like, you know, when your book comes out, you know, as you do more things, you're just going to keep going up and being bigger and bigger. And I was like, this is basically, I basically found like a diamond in the rough before he even, you know, blew up, man. So I, um, like I've been, like, I've seen your, I haven't like, I didn't get a chance to fully like consume more of your content to get yeah, a feel yeah, for yeah. you, but I had already, I had a feel for you as a person from like the first two or three things I saw. And I was like, yeah, like I'm with this kid. Yeah, man, I, I appreciate it. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Because, yeah, you know, I always debate, like, you know, I want to put out better content and whatever. And so, like, I always debate, like, what I do well. But I definitely think, I mean, that's what I'm trying to do, right, is show people, like, confidence is my golden rule. And so, like, you know, being in a wheelchair, it's like, okay, like, what? so what? Because I'm in a wheelchair, I'm not going to be confident. Are you kidding me? Like, you know, like, no, that's stupid. Like, I'm going to be confident no matter what. I'm going to be successful no matter what uh wheelchair no wheelchair because it just like just doesn't matter you know just doesn't, doesn't matter it doesn't man i'm a i'm a big gary v fan too when you said his mm. name so i was like and he's all about like you know adversity and the hustle and the grind and you know putting yourself out there and not worrying about other people's opinions so i was like this person's embodying it all the way man like 
you know, entrepreneur, entrepreneur all the way, man. So I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to see where you go, man. Like you got your book coming out too. That's I'm actually, fucking fantastic. I'm actually going to be talking to him uh, Thursday. So really? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So wish me luck on that. So you're going to be on TV with Gary V. I am. That's fucking fantastic. So yeah. <laughs> Dude, so that's awesome. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see too. I can't. That's nuts. That's nuts. How long did it take you to get out, get on there? Well, so the so this is interesting, right? So the remember I told you I run a podcast with my friend, right? Mm-hmm. So Brian, right? Um, Brian used to be an intern at Vayner Media, so he used to work under Gary. And what happened is I met Jeff Bezos, and so Jeff Bezos shouted me out on his Instagram page. And so Brian followed me because of that. And then now we're in contact and we'd run a podcast. And then like Brian introduced me to Gary V's assistant, Alex, got in touch with Alex. And then um, we were talking about some PR stuff because I'm trying to, you know, get this organization off the ground. And um, he's like, hey, have you ever met Gary? And I was like, no, I've never met Gary. He's like, okay, I want to go ahead and I want to go ahead and introduce you to Gary. I want to get you on. I was like, great. That's awesome. So so yeah, that's that's kind of how that happened. Holy shit! So you just you really like you're on that next wave right now, man. I caught you like right before the storm. Yeah, maybe. Hopefully, I mean, I need to I need to get my stuff out there because I feel like I have good stuff and I want to help people. Like, like you know, and I'm willing to be vulnerable, right? Like, you know, like you know, I mean, like I have to sacrifice my ego, but it's totally worth it. Like, you know, like there's stuff you just don't want to talk about. Like my arms getting weaker, right? Like, yeah, I don't really want to talk about that. That's kind of vulnerable. I didn't, I'm not. I saw I was, that post too. I saw you talking, you posted that Instagram. I saw that one too. You were talking about yeah. your arms getting weaker. I remember that. And, but like, you know what, that's helping people now. I know it. I know that's going to help someone in some way. Maybe their arms are not getting weaker. Most likely not, but something, right. I feel like there's going to be something that like, that's going to help them. Like, okay. Like, yeah, keep keep going. Even though I got the same in my life, like keep going, or or perhaps they can maybe accept themselves more, right? Maybe they can accept themselves more in their situation. So, yeah, man. I mean, you de- definitely inspired me, man. Like, I feel like I was already pretty confident, but I was like, damn, like if I was in his shoes, would I be able to do this too? And I'm like, well, I hope I fucking would, because <laughs> I think I, I got to talk to this man it's on on his way to big things. So, how was it when you met Bezos? What was that even like? Yeah, I mean that's a whole like two hour conversation, but um, I can only imagine, man. It was it was kind of funny, right? Um, the some of the executive state. So we go into his office, and uh, well, we we toured Amazon and everything before then. But so we go into his office, and the executives were like, "Okay, just relax. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be here. Just stay calm or whatever." And I was like, "Man, what are you? You're the one who's nervous. I'm chilling." And so uh, it was kind of funny, but um, yeah, you know, he came in, we talked, and we just you know. Uh, it was, it was a great experience. You know, I got to talk to, uh, my favorite business role model for sure. I mean, he's, like I said, he's the one who got me into business. Um, and so it was cool. You know, we talked about CRISPR, we talked about gene editing, um, gene therapy, you know, the nonprofit. Um, then we talked about business stuff, um, outer space, the future of outer space, right. You know, he runs blue origin. Mm -hmm. Um, we kind of talked about all these things and I was just kind of asking him like some really deep questions that. Uh, I don't really know if anyone's ever asked him because like I can't find any I can't find his answers to them on the internet and I, I went through a lot of content so um yeah it was a great experience that's awesome man that is fucking awesome so dude, dude man I mean and, I, and, and he he took a notice too he, he started asking me questions after like the first 10 minutes on like where's your mindset come from? Like, why are you so positive? Like, why aren't you negative? And I think that's actually the clip that he posted on his Instagram. Uh, you you got to check that out. He, he asked me like, why are you not negative in life? And honestly, it kind of just sent me back. Cause it's like, that's a hard question to answer. Like, why am I so positive? I don't, I don't know. But the, what I, what I said is, um, I said something along the lines of like, it just doesn't make logical sense to be negative. Like, I mean, if I go, okay, I'm in a wheelchair, this sucks. My disease sucks. Okay, now what? I'm still in a wheelchair, it still sucks. Like, you know, <laughs> why don't we focus on the good and then try and solve it and and make and solve the problem, right? So that's how I see it. That's awesome, man. I think I like I said, man, it got me here. So keep doing what you're doing. You're doing something right, man. And uh I can't even like the you're inspiring me, so I can't even imagine what someone who has DNM like what they feel like seeing you, you know what I mean? Like that, like the the for all the great you're doing for people that don't have it, for everyone that does have it, you're like, it's the fucking, like, 
the icon for him, you know? So, I mean, you're doing great things, man. Thank you. Thank you. So Elijah, how do, uh, how do people find you if they want to contact you or follow your page? How do they get in contact with you? Yeah. So I think, um, probably the best way um, right now is, um, you know, to follow me on social media. So on Instagram, Twitter, um, LinkedIn, um, TikTok, uh, if TikTok's still around, um, all those are at Elijah J. Stacy, and it's S T A C Y, no E. Um, so Elijah J. Stacy. But I'm even on Facebook. I started a Facebook page, which I'm still new to. Um, but it's basically FB, or it's at FB Elijah J. Stacy. So just FB Elijah J. Stacy. It's, um, yeah, so I got that too. So social media is a great way to uh, get in contact with me, follow, and see what I'm about. Um, but then, I mean, the organization has. Uh, it's on social media too, which is just at the short edition. So cool. All right, guys, we'll give him a follow. Elijah, thank you so much for being on the show. I uh, hope you guys, thank you guys for listening and uh, take care. Thank you.